Hello, Mike Bradley. I hope you are doing well as always. Yes, I have a cold. My voice is 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 a bit knackered today, so uh, apologies. But it's time to do some cool Q and A videos. The other day on Instagram, I posted that I want to do a Q and A and hit me with some questions. And many of you, <laughs> lots of you, hit me with some questions. So thank you all very much for that. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. There'll be something popping up right now. So uh, let me try and answer as many as I can right now. Apologies straight away if I'm rubbish with everyone's name, but the first one here, Jack Parado, uh, he's asked thoughts on Klon style drive pedals. Um, it's a very popular thing. Everyone goes on about Klon style drive pedals. Um, my take on it, a Klon is basically a boost pedal and it's a very good one. But all these Klon style, there's only one Klon, and that's the Klon, and now they go for a lot of money. But it's all basically a form of a boost pedal. Now, I recently, uh, thanks to lovely guys at Monty's, got this, which is the More pedal uh, from Monty's. And it's a very similar thing, where basically, uh, I think actually I, I did it in a recent video, but even when I have it, no, the knob off you can add a nice little bit of sparkle to it i tell you what let me let me do that right now one second well i say one second power of editing i'll be ready now you're gonna have to take my word for it here because i haven't got another camera set up but i've got the the right side of it uh, i'll do a screenshot um off and so technically no volume being added but is adding a nice sparkle to it so this is the pedal off <laughs> Add it in. So it's adding a really nice, like little magic sparkle, bit of treble added on top. And that's kind of what the Klon is doing. Now obviously with this one I can turn it up and whatnot. But the Klon is kind of doing that as well. I do think there's obviously some big hype. Not. Hype's the, the wrong word, but because, you know, everyone from John Mayer to Philip Sace to uh, Brad Whitford from uh, Aerosmith to Richie Sambora to Jeff Beck, you know, they all use the clon and they're using it for a reason. I think the prices for them are ridiculous, but, you know, it is what it is. But it's basically a really good boost pedal where you're getting the amp and, and it's adding a bit of sparkle and a bit of oomph to it. So uh, that's probably the best way. So I like them, you know, I, I think that they're nice. Um, you know, if, if you've got a good amp already as well, uh, you know, it's just adding a bit more to it. Hence what Monty's did there. This is not an ad, by the way, for that, but that's kind of the closest thing I have to... <laughs> that was a nice sound. That's the closest thing I've got to a clon type pedal here but uh yeah they're cool they're cool but not worth a thousand pound or whatever they're going for the, the original ones no way it's crazy i have a really squeaky chair i do apologize dennis blues has asked what do you do if you feel like you ain't getting better um really good question uh, i think a lot of people probably feel like that at times um i mean i love playing the guitar um, I've been playing the guitar for 25 years now. It's a long time, quarter of a century. Um, and so it's hard for me to answer that because I, I, I truly love playing the guitar and music. There are days where I feel I'm, I only can speak for myself here, but there's days when I feel I'm rubbish and, you know, can't play anything and everything like that. That's usually more of a mental thing or if I'm tired or, you know, not feeling great, but I've been playing today and loving it still. But I guess my only advice there could be is to listen to other types of music or even the music you love listening to, you know, stick it on without a guitar and just enjoy listening to it, you know, X, Y or Z player, it doesn't even have to be a guitar player, but just sit and listen to some music or watch some stuff or something like that, you know. Or, on the flip side of that, sometimes a little break is good. Uh, I wouldn't say have too long of a break because you come back and your technique could be uh, down a little bit. But sometimes a little break away from the instrument 
is a good thing to do. Now, as of now, you know, we're in November and uh, Christmas is coming around the corner. A lot of times Christmas, you know, we all, we're all busy with seeing family and all that kind of stuff. So you end up not playing as much and then you come back to it. But sometimes taking a break is, is a good thing um, if you're in that situation. But sometimes as well, I would say just listen to some really good music you love or good players. But it's hard for me to fully answer that because I just love playing the guitar. I've got a guitar nearly in every single room. Uh, you know, I always want to see a guitar. Uh, I, I love it. So, um, you know, for, for me personally, if I feel, um, if I remember your exact question properly, you're asking what you do if you feel like you ain't getting better. If I feel like I'm not getting better, I, I, I will practice more so that I get better. Because every day you can be better than yesterday. So, yeah, bear that one in mind. Brian or Bryn Pretty, I, I recognise your name, so hello buddy. Ask a cool question here. Apart from word of mouth, what's a good way to get more guitar students for one-to-one -one lessons? One good way is to have a YouTube channel where you can say, hi, I'm Mike Bradley. I now actually have a few more spaces for guitar lessons. So if you're interested, drop me an email uh, or contact me from my website right now and we can arrange some Skype lessons or in-person lessons for you. You can do that, and that is a genuine thing. I do have a few spaces now, so if you want some lessons, hit me up. Um, when I started teaching guitar, which was, God, 20 years ago, <laughs> um, it was just before the internet got very, very big, um, but I would put ads in the local guitar shops, um, in, in the UK, we got a thing called, well, had a thing called Thompson's and Yellow Pages, like a big, no, the phone book, basically. Uh, I would, you know, put my name in the phone book um, and the local paper and things like that. Uh, I would email schools and introduce myself as a guitar tutor and whatnot. And obviously things now have shifted more online, but that stuff can still work. So regarding schools, you know, contact your schools, say that, your guitar tutor in your area and you know you'll be interested in teaching at the school get online instagram um facebook I i'm not really a fan of facebook to be honest um especially you know because they want you <laughs> that even if, you, if people follow you on facebook uh no one sees it instagram's a lot better um and tiktok as well i'm liking but especially uh instagram and youtube get yourself out on here, just like what I'm doing right now. That's the whole reason I started YouTube, was to get my name out there for people to know me as a guitar player. And then I fell into the love of editing and stuff like that. If you're struggling or looking to find new people, let people know that you're available. So a lot of it now is word of mouth and online. So get yourself online and you can even, if you're doing Facebook or Instagram, you could, uh, advertise you know pay for the ads and you can um bookmark the app not bookmark but hone in the area where you live and the ads will kind of go there you know that's another good way to do it as well or well, one particular way to do it um <clears throat> get a business card if you're if you're a giggy musician start handing out you know gigs or getting little flyers at a musician uh, at your gigs when you're playing advertising that you're a guitar tube and you're available. When you say word of mouth, that's obviously, you know, your friends telling their friends, blah, blah, but it needs to come to the source. So you need to be getting the word out there for people get to, to, to start the word of mouth, but it all comes from you. So get your name out there as much as possible that you're available for uh, no, guitar lessons and they will come. Like I say, if you go to my website, mikebrunnymusic.com, contact me there, you can have guitar lessons with little old me. Kamuk. Gupta, sorry if I've said that wrong, uh, he's asked how to find the chords of the songs or melodies on our own. So that is about getting your ear training kind of going, right? So when I started trying to you know, work songs out by ear, I would hone in to what the bass is doing. So let's say I've got a little chord progression, if I put it in a loop here. <laughs> So 
there's my little loop. And then so then I think, okay, what are each chord? And if you can just get them, oh, I can't sing now, but. I would then find, sorry, I was still a little bit uh, flat then, but I have a cold. But I would home in to that note uh, for the bass note, the tonic, to try and find the uh, and then going to the B there. But also as well, to listen if something is a major chord or a minor chord. Does it sound happy? Or does it sound sad? It's a big difference there, you know? So on that second chord, I was playing a B minor, not a not a B major. So I hone into the to the bass notes so you're getting the roots, and then start hearing if it's start listening if it's happy, sad, and and of course the more you learn about chords and recognizing the sounds, you know, hearing the difference between a say a major chord to a major seven chord, and like extra a note there or a dominant chord. Know, or flat uh, to a flat 13 7 chord you know all these little things that kind of come so don't go straight away trying to work out some Frank Zappa um, and then chords and melodies I'm assuming <clears throat> you're talking about as well like solo guitar you know that as well but there you want to have the melody first And I think, okay, da 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 And then start slowly but surely. And start putting them in bit by bit that way. Um, so again, nursery rhymes or stuff like that is a good place to start. You now even happy birthday. You know, but... So there I'm putting da 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 that's a D and A chord, but I'm putting the bass notes in there. Then it goes to the G chord. So little things like that is a really good place to start, and then that way you can build it up. To so start with, you know, funny old nursery rhymes you used to do when you were a kid, and then work up to the Beatles or whatever, and then take it from there kind of thing. Hopefully that helped. A very good question here from Rafael Mastro Angelo. Uh, he's asked, with many great guitarists on YouTube and Insta, is it hard for new creators to get in? Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's hard for creators who have been around for a while. You know, when I started taking YouTube seriously in about 2015, um, I'll never use the word easy, but it was slightly um, less hard <laughs> to get seen, if that makes sense. Now, it's very, very hard to kind of go viral uh, if you're a new person. Or even if you're an older, per when I say older, someone who's been around for a little while, you know. Um, it's There's a lot of people doing it now. Uh, which is cool, um, but, and, you know, before, I, I miss the days where it wasn't all about nice lighting or good cameras, you know, I miss it when, you no, know, you just get a vlog camera or your phone or something. When I, if you see my very early YouTube videos, they were so bad, I didn't do anything with lighting or anything like that. Um, I would just turn the camera on and go. And I, I remember the guys back then, I remember seeing Rob Chapman in his old, uh, room where, where he lived, you know, and it was just all very kind of gorilla style kind of stuff, you know, and it was great to see, you know, just kind of vlogs and fly on the wall kind of stuff and all the other kind of creators back then as well. And um, and now people still do that, but it's, 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 it's very slick, which is cool. I love it. I like kind of changing about with lights and like that, but also I miss the days where you don't have to worry about if the camera is shaking or something, it's just all boom, go. Um, but we're all kind of used to seeing perfect, almost like 
Hollywood style <laughs> videos now, aren't we? But, so I do think it's harder if you're any kind of creator trying to pop out on YouTube and Instagram. <clears throat> but one thing I think is always important and something I've always stood by myself is be you. Don't try and copy in anyone else, what he's doing, what she's doing, what they're doing. Just worry what you're doing. Of course, it's cool to be inspired by other creators and stuff like that, but I would certainly never go out to copy anyone. Um, certainly, personality-wise, like there's only one me. There's only one you. So be the best you, and I'll be the best me I can be in doing creating content, creating music, creating videos. And if people want to watch that, fantastic. If they don't, that's okay. You know. Um, I think we're all guilty of blaming the algorithms. I get annoyed, especially when people message me saying, oh, I haven't seen your videos pop up in my subscriptions and that. And it, it's annoying because you create this stuff if you want people to see. But at the same time, I'm like, well, if, if they want to see it, they you know just type in my name and you're going to find me. Um, so, yeah, just if people watch you, fantastic. If they don't, it's okay. There will be others who do, who, who will want to watch you and will find your kind of stuff. So just concentrate being the best you and create stuff what you, no, create stuff what you would like to watch. Like, that's another thing I've always liked. You know, for me, I'm a bit of a geek. I like little vloggy, flying the wall stuff or talking about guitars or gears or stuff like that. That's what I like to watch um, when I get the time to watch uh, videos, uh, which isn't much at the moment, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, think, would I like to watch this and take it from there? But concentrate being the best you as a creator and then eventually the light will find you. Ashcanshooter.10 asks, Telly or Strat, why? Oh, um, the age old question, you know, I've my actually talking about earlier about, you know, getting big, my first big video I had, Telecaster versus Stratocaster. Um, I'll put it up there if you haven't seen it. I love both. For me, it would be a Strat and then a Telecaster. I, you know, I love, I love them. It's very hard because I go through phases. You know, a couple of years ago, I was I was playing a Strat nearly all the time. But I, I love a Strat. You know, it's 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 got the curves in the right place. Um, you know, you've got the comfort cut on the back, so it's nice and snug on the body. Um, I like the in-between um, positions. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I would say I'm probably more strap man over a telly. But I love the telecast as well, but you're making me pick. So I'm going to pick a strat for me at this moment in time. If I was, no, if I was going to a gig and I saw my telly or strat, I'd probably pick a strat. You know, if I was doing a country gig, I would pick a telly. But at the same time, I like how you can get really cool funk sounds with a telly as well. That in between the neck and bridge position, uh, the middle position on a Telecaster is, is brilliant. So, um, yeah, it's a tough one to say. I love both, but I'm, I'm going to say for today, the Strat. Callum Maguire asks, any hair tips? <laughs> wash. I wash my hair every day. I can't, I can't go a day without washing. If I do, it goes very, very greasy. Wash your hair every day and uh, let it air dry for a bit. Hair dryer. And then if I feel like it, I'll put a bit of hairspray on. Bang. That's the Mike Bradley hair tutorial. <laughs> Peter Dale Music asks, what are the three most important genres to master for guitar? Man, that all depends on what you like. You know, um, it all depends on on the music you like. Um, and, and also, I don't think you can ever fully master a genre. Um, you know, for me, I love blues guitar. I love rock guitar. I love funk guitar. I love country guitar. I love some jazz guitar. I love acoustic kind of finger picky kind of Tommy Emmanuel Chet Atkins guitar. Well, that's six genres there, you know. And I and I, I I've 
dabbled in and probably some more here and there as well but no slide as well um but i think in the contemporary world um you know with blues you've got r and b as well r and b and soul guitar i think that's really important to kind of get down for rhythm but i think if you can get your funk chops down and then once you've got that funk chops, that rhythm playing will then go across the board if you're an indie player to if you're a country guy to a jazz guy because it's all about getting in the pocket and stuff. So I think getting funk down is cool. Um, if you're into rock, you know, getting that down, you know, be able to control gain. Because sometimes, you know, playing with a loud amp with lots of gain is hard to control. It's good to be able to master that ability to control that. And... I guess blues, but you know, I, I wouldn't just put it to those three. For, for me, if you want to be an overall guitar player, you know, try and get any bits and bobs as possible. I think just honing it down to three genres or anything like that, I think just play what you like, I would say, you know. I mean, look at Joe Pass. Joe Pass was one of the greatest jazz guitar players ever. I doubt he could play metal guitar because that wasn't what he was into. So he was one of the greatest jazz guitar players of all times. But if you know, if he was to you know, audition for Megadeth or something like that, I doubt he'd get in. But I doubt he would care. On the flip side, take someone like Ingve Malmsteen, neo-classical shred guitar player, you know, his, techni his technical ability on the guitar is is up there with the best of them. But if he was to do a bebop gig or even, you know, playing James Brown's band, you know, I doubt he will be able to do that well because that his vision has been that particular genre of music, what he loves playing, you know. And then if you take someone like Steve Lukather, who has dabbled in the rock, has dabbled in blues, has dabbled in jazz, and being a session guy, great funk player as well. You know, he's obviously into a, 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 a broader spectrum of music. So he's gone down that route. So I would say to that is, whatever your favourite genres of music, if you've got three favourite genres, pound on those and get those genres down. If you're someone like me who's into different styles of music, and loves playing country guitar and loves playing, or trying to, loves playing rock and blues and things like that. Like I remember when, <clears throat> it was a few years ago, I really wanted, oh my voice is going, this might have to be the last question. Um, when I was wanting to get into blues properly a few years back, and um, you know, when we think blues, we think, oh yeah, pentatonic, but I'm talking kind of proper. <laughs> Know, kind of bb king proper blues where you're kind of playing over the changes you know whatever um i would listen to that style i was listening to so much blues i got the live no bb king live at the regal i was listening to a load of him I was listening to a lot of Robin Ford. When I was doing the washing up, I'd have the music on and, you know what I mean? I, in the car, I would pull it on and just absorbed that that sound and that tonal, tonal sound and the phrasing of that music. So then when I came back to playing the guitar, that vocabulary was kind of already going around there. Same thing when I was kind of getting more into country and things like that. Listen to a lot of that kind of stuff and then... <laughs> You know, it starts kind of coming out into your playing. So that's what I would say there. But find the genres of music you like and pound them. Listen to them, play them, study them as much as you can. Uh, and then you will become the overall great guitar player for you. So hopefully that helps. Right, there's a few more questions here, but to be honest, guys, my, my voice is starting to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it there. But thank you all so much for your questions. Um, Please let me know in the comment section below anything what I was spoken about, what may have helped or didn't help. 
Um, and do follow me on Instagram because when I next do a Q&A, you can get your question in and I'll do my best to get to you. Sorry for those who I haven't quite got to, um, but I need to stop talking now. So anyway, I've been Mike Bradley. Thank you all for love and support. Do check out my website, like I say. Get a t-shirt. You can be as cool as the next guy. And uh, I'll see you very soon. <clears throat> Hopefully with a slightly better voice. Mike Bradley very much. Signing out. Lots of love. Bye.